I'm gonna go over a couple clips here, but um, I typically like to start before we get in the clips just about some like background stuff and and stuff going into this season. And I've noticed that you've had a big breakout season this year. Um, and it's unfortunate that it's been such a shortened season because I, I believe I, I got to check the stats again. You've already passed your sack total from last year, your tackle for a loss total from last year, and you're doing it in like half the games. Uh, so I did want to ask you, what kind of was the the big catalyst for you making that improvement uh, from your junior year to your senior year here? Yeah, I mean, um, last year was my first year since high school uh, that I got to play like a true DN. So uh, just getting back to that, uh, getting your instincts back to that. Um, first year in the new defense as well. So learning that and then uh, – a lot of my off season, I really worked on on uh, my pass rush and stuff because I, I felt that that was an area that I needed to improve on. So just being more active and um, better angles, more, better finishing. Uh, a lot of my stuff was a uh, ankle. I used to uh, did a lot of ankle dexterity stuff just to work on that range of motion. So when I'm coming around the corner, I can flatten out. But uh, that, that was what I did most of the off season. Nice, nice. How, how do you work on the ankle? Is it like a lot of drill work with the ankle flexation or what are you kind of working on with that? Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, I've played 4i uh, freshman, sophomore year. So I got I got uh, into that, got up to around just around 290, um, played 4i. So, uh, you know, you don't really have to bend when you're in 4i. You're always either hitting a, a guard or a tackle or getting a double mm-hmm. team. So it's definitely something that I had to work on, uh, drill work, uh, stretching, uh, just, just like repetition of bending around the, uh, the edge, you know, so. Uh, that's really what I got into. Gotcha. So you dropped from 290 to 270 to, to play end? Right. All right. So I need some tips on how to drop weight because I'm <laughs> <laughs> going quite a bit now. So what was kind of your workout regimen to get down to that, like, 270 um, to play that defensive end for, for Houston? I mean, was it, was it a ton of work to get kind of that weight down for you? Yeah, I mean, uh, it started last year when the old staff got here. I was getting over my uh, foot surgery, um, so I didn't really get any spring ball. But that summer, uh, I, I was I was playing. I was still playing up in the up in the two eighties um, on the edge, which was pretty big. The end, so mm-hmm. um, it, it's hard to move uh, consistently at that weight uh, sometimes when it's not the mm-hmm. uh, best weight on you. And you know, I was coming off surgery, so yeah, I really, really wasn't doing that much. So. Uh, just throughout the year last year, I was trying to just just kind of stay around my my natural weight that I came in at, and then just this past off season, I was just kind of started eating a little better. Uh, you know, I still got my cheat meals, um, but <laughs> I try I try to focus on eating a little better. Uh, I worked out more uh, two a days. Uh, I got a, got a trainer, Donovan Young, uh, over at Highlight Club, uh, and used to worked out with him. A couple NFL guys, uh, but you know, we were hitting workouts. I hit workouts with, up at the team, mm-hmm. optional workouts, and I go hit hit another second workout every day. So I was pretty consistent doing that. So it helped me help me get in shape. Perfect. In shape. Perfect. And then uh, one more thing. I well, want to ask you, oh, sorry, were you jumping in there, Russ? Yeah, I was gonna say. So you said, um, you know, like you you had the surgery in 2018, and you were primarily playing as a four eye there. Is that is is the foot surgery kind of what had coaches make them self say, "Hey, we're going to have you jump to the the edge rusher role"? Why did why did you move to that traditional spot? Yeah, I mean, uh, so you know that that new staff came in uh, right after we came back from winter break in uh, twenty so twenty nineteen, mm-hmm. right? So you know they came in, they didn't really get to see me much. They saw the film, obviously, but um, they didn't really get to see me much, see, see how much how athletic I was. So just going through spring ball and watching. Um, you know, it was really, it was really Coach Early, my D line coach here. He he thought that I was athletic enough to play on the edge, but he also thought that I was big and strong enough to play uh, on the interior at three tech. So it's more really more just preference. And you know, I had that DN background mm-hmm. uh, in high school, so we needed we needed um, a little bit more depth at DN because we had some D tackles that that could play um, and had had some experience on the inside. So yeah, uh, I just came came in the summer, uh, did really well, and. You know, I ended up at the end. Perfect. Perfect. So we're going to jump into the clips here. And, and here we have you at standing up defensive end. It's, it's probably been a while since you stood up at the defensive end, huh? Like maybe back in high school or something like that where you're standing yeah. up? Yeah, I stood up a little bit in high school. Uh, I played all up and down the line in high school, though. So mm-hmm. it, it was fun to get back up in a two small stance on the edge. It's probably been a weird thing just, you know, being, you know, 270 standing up there on the edge. It's probably a different uh, thing for you. Um, but this is this is a huge matchup for you because I think this is Brady Christensen right here, uh, left tackle. Uh, he's going to be in the NFL one day. Obviously, you got the quarterback here, Zach Wilson, who's going to be 
probably a first round pick. So this was a big game for you. And uh, most of the clips are going to be from this game because this is what kind of, this is the game that kind of stood out for me when I was watching uh, your film. And it was mostly this clip right here was the best pass rush right there, the arm over uh, swim, uh, getting, you know, again, an NFL tackle on the ground here. Uh, so is this one of the moves you've been working on the off season, kind of that, that swim move, get over, um, work on the hands there? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm a taller end, so it's always it's always good to have a, a swim move, uh, you know, in, in the toolbox. So, yeah, uh, flipping your hips, getting deep on the uh, tackles' uh, hips, you know, uh, where you couldn't recover. So, yeah, I mean, it's for sure something I've been working on. Yeah, and the well, biggest thing I've noticed with kind of your pass rushing is that the biggest thing is breaking those hands is what um, I've really noticed in your game. Is that kind of something that you really focused on is getting those hands off you and trying to get around that way? Yeah, uh, like as you develop as a pass rusher, I think uh, hands are really, really important. Having good hands, uh, being able to see hands and uh, block hands from o and touching you. So that's definitely something I was working on this entire offseason, um, especially with Coach Early uh, here at Houston. So That's something that's so important too, like active hands, active feet. And like when you watch this rep, you see like as you're in that stand-up edge role, what I notice most importantly is and this is something like I'm not being hypocritical or, or <laughs> being a critic of it or anything like that, but like you're so big and seeing you stand up sometimes looks awkward, but you're able to just bring that pad level down and the way that you bring that you lower your center of gravity is pretty impressive. And I think what is just like the most impressive part of it all is how you set outside and get this offensive tackle to just bite to the outside rush and you get inside with that swim move. So that's, a, that's a great rush right there. Appreciate it. <laughs> uh, one, one thing I like asking pass rushers, I talked to, um, who was it? I think it was Laurel Merchantson out of NC state last year. He told me that when studying the film of opposing players, uh, he, he saw a tell in, in North Carolina in particular, uh, where every time the left tackle put his hands on his knees, it was going to be a pass every single time. Mm -hmm. that, so when you're studying film, are you kind of looking for tells in tackles or guys that you're going to be facing throughout the, the course of a game? Yeah, uh, I mean, you see it in the game. You'll see little weight shifts or, or you'll pick up on a tendency. So, uh, you know, if you got time to do that pre-snap or, or, or during the snap, it's always helpful to know that it's going to be a pass or run, especially in college. So, yeah, uh, yeah, those, those are, those are uh, little tips that you can pick up on. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And the last thing I want to ask about this clip here is you can see this tackle is kind of doing like more of an aggressive set on you. He's kind of uh, side shuffling, not really getting into that that vertical set. Um, does that kind of change how you attack an, an offensive tackle with their if they're coming on more of that shuffle instead of a, a vertical set? Yeah, I mean, it ha makes everything happen a little quicker. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so a lot of times when you get them that, that wide, they, they have to almost turn their hips to stop the uh, or shoot their hands. So, so you know you're going to get one of the two. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it just speeds everything up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then getting to these other clips. I mean, I know a lot of these other clips, I think, are just huge effort plays. And I'm sure your coaching staff loves that. I know any coaching staff would. I mean, this one's this one's a, just a big-time effort play, just turning off of the uh, the option and getting to the running back and chasing him down. Uh, but I do want to highlight again that that ankle work that you were doing here. I mean, that, that ability just to stop on a dime like that and – and get back to the outside. Um, that, that's, that's just huge. And what I've noticed in a lot of your game here. So uh, that ankle work has definitely been um, something that, like you said, you've been working on and stuff and, and it's definitely uh, been huge for this stuff. But um, when it comes to the effort plays and stuff, I mean, the, is your coaching staff like really big on, on preaching uh, the defensive lineman or just every single player kind of getting to the ball? Yeah. I mean, I think every coaching staff is, uh, if you don't want a guy that plays the effort, then I mean, uh, that, that takes a big part of a football player out, I think, um, mm -hmm. the way it's supposed to be played. But, yeah, I mean, our coach is a preach effort, uh, preach running to the ball, especially from D linemen. Uh, death from behind uh, is what we hear a lot. Um, I mean, you got four, four of the players on the field, four of the 11 are, are defensive linemen, so you got to gotta be able to run. So, Yeah, yeah, for sure. This will definitely show up in the senior bowl when you're running down those, <laughs> those guys on the outside. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and that was going to be a question I bring up is as far as the senior bowl, I don't know if you've checked out like the roster or anything like that, but like, have you been studying anybody from the senior bowl? Like that's accepted an invite. Have you gotten that far yet? I mean, I know you're still kind of in season and everything, so it's, it's a little bit different, but um, have you been paying attention to anybody like to see any type of tendencies that they have? 
No, I haven't quite gotten around to that yet. Uh, like you said, I mean, I just I just uh, decided that I'm not, I'm not going to be playing in my bowl game. So uh, it's not something I've gotten around to yet. But I mean, I have seen some of the off tackles that are going, and uh, it looks like it looks like I got some pretty good guys going. So yeah, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, it's gonna be a good group down there this year. It's gonna be a fun fun time down there. Um, and hopefully, like you said, because we were talking about the other day, and actually, I wanted to ask you this um, when we started. Um, you said that you still feel like you're kind of getting slept on, and and I completely agree. I think you know if you when you watch these games, I mean, obviously with with your effort, with your ability that you've kind of improved on the going into your senior year, uh, I do kind of think you're being slept on here in this draft class. Um, do you think that is because of this COVID shortened season, or because no one's just really been able to watch your? What do you think the reason is that people are kind of sleeping on your game a little bit? Uh, man, I'm not sure. Uh, um, I mean, I feel like I have everything that I need to to be a, a top rated guy. Um, obviously, I think I play hard. I think I think I'm a big, big end. I'm, I'm physical. I think I could bend pretty well. Uh, I'm pretty, pretty fast. But I don't know. Uh, honestly, uh, maybe maybe it's just because I wasn't on the quite on the ra- all, everybody's radar going into the season. Uh, but I mean, I've done really. I've done everything that I did last year and three and a half games really I didn't play half of UCF game I played I think under 10 snaps last game uh, against Memphis so uh, I don't know um, hopefully hopefully I can get them uh, waking up on me yeah. the, the yeah, for sure man for sure I mean if they just turn on the film they'll see it but um, this clip right here on the outside is uh, just another power rush and again we I just love the ability to you know you're playing you said you played the four eye starting up we're gonna see some plays where you're in the three tech and inside here you're all the way out here in like the wide nine standing up. Um, again, just that ability to play all across the entire line has been great to see. But um, starting with this bull rush here, I mean, it, would you say you're more of a, a power rusher uh, with your size and your ability to kind of play across the line? Yeah, I mean, I think I think that I get a, a lot of uh, offensive linemen worried about my, my power rush because I am a bigger DN, you know, mm-hmm. a bigger dude just in general. So uh, it's, it's definitely one of my one of my things that I use. Um, to set up other moves, but yeah, like power is always always a good opportunity for me to get a, a pass rush. With. Yeah. yeah. Do you, Do you have a preference, like as far as you know, you've played in a variety of spots. We'll see a couple plays here. You in a three tech. You've played four I. You're here on the outside. Do you have a preference of where you would want to play? And then, like we mentioned, this power rush. Do you have like a preference of when you want to bring that out? Like when you're inside. Are you necessarily going for that power against another interior offense alignment who might be a little bit stronger? Do you have a preference? Um, I mean, I, I prefer to be on the outside. Uh, I think I think uh, you know, rushing, edge rushing is more fun uh, in some aspect. Mm-hmm. But you know, when you go go inside, you usually lined up on the, on the you know, they're not offensive tackles for a reason for most most of the time. So. Yeah. You get you get you get to get right. matched up on somebody that that may not be quite as athletic, so it's more it's more it's just different. It's just different worlds. So I mean, well, I yeah, enjoy- and you get you know, yeah, you get inside, you get a little bit more power on power, more times than not. So I've always kind of wondered, like, do you necessarily go power to power, or do you, you know, it just always interests me on how an edge rusher or a defensive lineman assesses that situation when they're in it. Yeah, I mean, it depends on how many people are coming, you know, uh, what, what the yeah. what the guy in front of you looks like, how he sets. A lot of it's determined by the set, I feel. Um, mm-hmm. uh, if you get if you get no hands, what are you, what are you going to swipe? What what hands are you going to beat? You know, if he gets a good good deep and no hands, what are you going to do? You know, right. you, don't really, you don't have that many options, but power, maybe take an inside move. I'm not sure, but yeah, yeah, I mean, nice like nice spark step on this uh, interior move here. Appreciate you. I, I dig that. I was saying, meanwhile, right I'm there. just playing this clip of you driving a guy into the ground to kind of show the <laughs> show the power move there on the inside. This is power versus yeah. power. Uh, yeah, the biggest thing here is just, I mean, look at look at the guard's hands just shooting outside, way too wide, and you get the and you get your hands inside way quicker than him, um, and just able to drive him back into the ground well, there. And two, you can check, like, watch his right hand. He he starts bringing that right hand a little bit more outside. Like, that guard thought he was going straight ahead, and you spark step right into that A-gap. That's – you got him – you had him dead to rights from the get-go. Right. Oh, man. Oh, you, you mentioned it a couple times here, but I – but Brian Early, uh, Demon's line coach, came in um, this past year, and he, he's the one who really moved you more outside, moved you all around. 
Uh, and, you know, I've done some research on Brian Early. I've seen he's he's coached quite a few guys that have made it to the NFL. Um, maybe not been like stars in the NFL or anything, but guys who have made it to that level. Uh, how big was he kind of coming in and, and, you know, how big was he toward your development here this past season? Uh, he was big time, man. Um, you know, I think he's I think he's increased my uh, football IQ, especially this past season. Uh, just learning about like sets and and hand, beating hands, uh, a lot of drill work and stuff. But I mean, he's a great coach. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets a DC job mm -hmm. in a couple of years, or or um, I don't know, he makes makes it to the league. I'm not sure how that coaching, how that works, but I wouldn't be surprised to see him doing something uh, bigger than just a position coach soon. So did he just kind of like teach you more how to, I mean, obviously, you know, how to watch film. I mean, everyone knows how to watch film, but there, there's different nuances to watching film, you know, watching what you're looking at and stuff. Was he really big in just getting you to, you know, watch how, you know, how guys are like, I think the sets is the biggest thing, honestly. Um, but he just kind of taught you a better way to watch film uh, for defense lineman. Yeah, man. Um, he's just, he, he's just all around a good coach, man. He, uh, I mean, I really wasn't that critical of, of offensive tackles looking at their weaknesses and stuff, you know, breaking out film, looking uh, at the next games and stuff up until then, you know. Uh, I mean, everybody watches film on their opponent, but do you really understand the film or, or can you can point out their weaknesses or, or, or their strengths? So tendencies, you know. Uh, I think that's something that he's really helped me on uh, this past year. Here, Rush, you can ask him if he was squeezing this here. Oh, yeah. No, I was, I was running down the line trying to get that uh, – it looked like they were running a um, toss play to the outside, so I was trying to chase that down, and I felt the tackles leave. So, Yeah, I was just wondering, because, you know, you're in that four-point stance. So we've seen, like, everything so far. You're inside, you're in a three-point stance, you're standing up. Now you're in a four-point stance. It looks like a four-point – that's a four-point stance. Yeah. And I was wondering, just judging by, like, the way <clears> – <throat> you kind of shot out of your stance. It looked like maybe you were trying to squeeze that down, but we were just trying to, I don't know, I was just stifling it, but you, you said it, you were just trying to chase down a possible toss. So oh, yeah, I'm good. Over. Yeah, I'm good there. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is our process of watching film. We just, <laughs> it's a lot of guessing. Well, that's, you know. that's the other thing. It's like, you know, I'm not in these film rooms. I don't necessarily know. Like I can guess to my best judgment of, the years I've coached high school football and what I want my guys to do, but I don't necessarily know what Peyton's coach wants him to do. You know what I mean? Like it's a, it's a guessing game. It's that's the fun part of it though. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, no, I'm just trying try to chase down the uh, screen. These guys are a big uh, outside, like full, mm -hmm. full line zone team. So uh, stretch team. So that's why I saw, so I was chasing that down. Dude, this doesn't this look like uh, the end of remember the Titans when he's chasing down the, the dude in the open field. You guys remember the end of that, that movie? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what he looks like. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Just catching him from behind there. But again, the, the ankle work definitely paid off for you this last year. I mean, the, the way you're just able to stop on a dime right there. And I mean, you're, you're moving faster than number three here. Your linebacker, you're able to adjust quicker than your own guy and get down the line there. So that, that's just awesome. I, I just really like highlighting the effort plays like this because I know a lot of teams, uh, like for instance, you know, I cover the Colts here. Um, the Colts do something where they, they chart loafs on defense and stuff. Uh, it's a really cool thing that they've done the last couple of years under coach Matt Eberflus. And if they see any play where a guy's not trying to pursue the ball, they get docked for it in their film sessions. Uh, and this kind of stuff is stuff that that would stand out to them. And so, and, and I know a lot of teams are like that as well from, from talking to, to people in, in front offices and such. So uh, yeah, this is just the stuff that NFL teams love to see. And I'm sure that they're taking notice of when, when they're watching your film. All right, last one, and I Russ didn't even see this one before we even jumped in here. So, uh, but another pass rush, four point stance on the outside here, and I love this move right here. This quick hands, just break the <laughs> break those hands right there. Um, so I, I've seen I've seen the swim, I've seen the bull rush, and I've seen uh, this, this is an arm over, I believe, yeah. right? Speed chop, just speed chop. Yeah, speed chop, speed chop. Yep. What kind of move do you have more in your arsenal as well? Is this kind of one of your go tos? What like how many moves we we talking about here that you've been working on on, on the outside? I mean, the more opportunities you get, the more moves you can set up. So uh, yeah. you know, throughout the game, so I mean, you know, we got them in a position where they had to had to throw the ball some more. So you know, you get get more creative. But yeah, man, I mean, you'll, you'll see some more of the Senior Bowl hopefully. Yeah, I'm excited for that. I'm excited. Uh, from from guys you, I've talked to with with defensive ends and stuff, they always say like it's if you have one go-to move 
you're a pro bowler. If you have two go-to like, like elite moves, you're a hall of famer is what I've always been told. You know, guys like Robert Mathis and stuff have said that. So when, when you're rushing, is it like, I know variety is big, right? Variety is big. You want to mix up the moves. Um, but kind of being great at that one move, you know what I mean? Like, like how big is it to kind of work on those couple moves and just perfecting those couple ones rather than, you know, getting, throwing a hundred moves at a guy uh, throughout the course of a game. Uh, yeah, it's big time, man. I mean, you know, uh, everybody's got to have different moves. Um, everybody's got different body types and different skill sets. So, I mean, you just got to really just mess around and see what you're good at and get better at those. But yeah, being able to have one or two moves, especially that you develop throughout the week, you know, you might see an offensive tackle is weaker at can't handle this, can't handle that. So, you know, perfecting moves throughout the week is big time, especially in the offseason. Yeah. Did you have something you want to I got, say? Else? Yeah. I got, well, I was going to throw a jab at a, a team that I don't like in the NFL, but I'll, I'll leave it to myself. Um, I was going to ask a question as far, I got to, why the number 98? Is there a specific reason behind that? I've always been so interested into defensive linemen and why they pick their number. Sometimes it just, uh, that was the only number they had, but is there a meaning behind 98? I mean, that was just the number I've had always since I played football. So, you know, I just kept that number throughout my, throughout my career. All right. And then my last question is, we, I mean, obviously everybody's watching film all the time, especially guys in college trying to, you know, watch a Von Miller, trying to pick up what they do. Do you have certain guys that you watch on a weekly basis or on a off season basis where you're watching and, and trying to pay attention to what they do? Do you have specific guys? Yeah. I mean, I watch, I watch, uh, you know, you watch a lot of football, and, you know, you catch yourself only watching your position throughout the game sometimes. Yeah. But uh, I mean, I watch, uh, a lot of guys are, I feel like, are similar to me in, in size or in length or, or that I feel have good power moves. So, you know, I watch, I'll watch T.J. Watt, Marcus Davenport, uh, Cam Jordan, uh, Max Crosby, all those all those guys on the edge, you know, that are a little longer. But, I mean, I'm, I mean, I watch all, all the ends, you know. I watch I watch mm-hmm. what I watch what he does. I watch Vaughn Miller, <laughs> Will Mack. You know, they're just entertaining, great players, good pass rushers. So, you know, uh, that's how I And I, I actually have what – I got one more. Last year, Josh Jones was the big guy, and everybody talked about him at the Senior Bowl. You get to practice against him every single day. What was that like matching up against somebody like Josh Jones? Yeah, man, Josh is a great player, a uh, great tackle. Uh, I'm excited to see him uh, get his get his opportunity in the league because I know he's gonna be great. But mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's always it's always a good and nice to know uh, that you got someone that's gonna compete every day you go to practice. Um, you know, we, I mean, we, we, we battled, you all, everybody always says that they battled, uh, when they, yeah. to, but we, we, we battle every day. You know, you can't come, you can't come in there half stepping on it on a day just cause you don't feel good. You got to come and bring it every day. So it's always nice to, uh, to have someone to compete against and get better. All right. Awesome. We're going to end this off with another question here. Um, senior bowl is coming up and I know I've mentioned a couple times, um, I'll be down there. Russ, unfortunately, won't be able to make it this year, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, but we're all going to see it live. We're going to see uh, the person that everyone's been sleeping on, Peyton Turner, down there at the Senior Bowl. What can we expect from you against this, this top talent and, and all that stuff? And I mean, this is a huge week for you to, to get your name out there. What, what can we expect for you to, from you down there? I mean, I'm going to compete. Uh, I mean, I'm a competitor. I love, I love competition, man. So, um, you know, I'm not, not going to shy away from any of that competition, man. Um, hopefully I can put myself in a position to where I'm, you know, climbing draft boards. Uh, you know, that's the goal. So I hope that's what y'all see. Awesome. Awesome, man. Well, hey, we appreciate you uh, you jumping on today and breaking down some film. And, uh, yeah, really excited about seeing where you end up here in the NFL and and uh, especially where they use you in the NFL and, and all, all across <laughs> the line. That's going to be fun. Um, but, yeah, man, appreciate you jumping on today and uh, just good luck with everything in this process. I know it's it's a crazy-ass process from from guys I've talked to, from – signing with agents and, and all these all-star stuff and, and interviews with teams. Uh, it's, it's absolutely crazy. So uh, just good luck with all that, man. And hopefully end up in a really good spot here. Yeah, it's wild, man. But thank y'all. For, thank y'all. For-